Long Discourses Ma Paranabhne Sutta, 5. 16 The Discourse About the Great Emancipation. The Fifth Chapter for Recitation 33, Worshipping the Realized One. Then the Gracious One addressed Venerable Nanda, saying, Come Nanda, let us approach the further shore of the Golden River, to Cusanair, and to the Malas Sal Wood at Upavatana. Very well, Reverend Sir, Venerable Nanda replied to the Gracious One. Then the Gracious One together with a great community of monks went to the further shore of the Golden River, to Cusanair, and the Malas Sal Wood at Upavatana, and after going he addressed Venerable Nanda, saying, Come, Nanda, prepare a couch with the head facing north between the twin sal trees for me, I am weary, Nanda, and will lie down. Very well, Reverend Sir, said Venerable Nanda, and after replying to the Gracious One, he prepared a couch with the head facing north between the twin sal trees. Then the Gracious One, lay down on his right side in the lion's posture, after placing one foot on the top of the other, mindfully, with full awareness. Now at that time the twin sal trees were full of flowering blossoms, outside of flowering time, and they were sprinkling down on the realized one's body, showering down, pouring down on the realized one in worship. Also the divine coral tree flowers were falling from the sky, and they were sprinkling down on the realized one's body, showering down, pouring down on the realized one in worship. Also divine sandalwood powder was falling from the sky and was sprinkling down on the realized one's body, showering down, pouring down on the realized one in worship. Also divine music played in the sky in worship of the realized one. Also divine songs played in the sky in worship of the realized one. Then the gracious one said this to Venerable Nanda, The twin sal trees are full of flowering blossoms, outside of flowering time, and they are sprinkling down on the realized one's body. Showering down, pouring down on the realized one in worship. Also the divine coral tree flowers are falling from the sky, and they are sprinkling down on the realized one's body. Showering down, pouring down on the realized one in worship. Also divine sandalwood powder is falling from the sky, and is sprinkling down on the realized one's body, showering down, pouring down on the realized one in worship. Also divine music plays in the sky in worship of the realized one. Also divine songs play in the sky in worship of the realized one. But it is not in this way, Nanda, that the realized one is honored, respected, revered, worshipped, or esteemed. But that monk, nun, layman, or laywoman, Nanda, who lives practicing the teaching in accordance with the teaching, see. Orect in their practice, living in conformity with the teaching, he honors, respects, reveres, worships, and esteems the realized one with the highest worship. Therefore, Nanda, thinking, let us live practicing the teaching in accordance with the teaching, correct in our practice, living in conformity with the teaching, this is how you are to train, Nanda. 34. The Visit of the Divinities Now at that time Venerable Yupava was standing in front of the Gracious One, fanning the Gracious One. Then the Gracious One dismissed Venerable Yupava, saying, Depart, monk, do not stand in front of me. Then Venerable Nanda thought, This Venerable Yupava has been the Gracious One's attendant for a long time, living near to him, within proximity. Then at the last moment the Gracious One dismisses Venerable Yupava, saying, Depart, monk, do not stand in front of me. What was the reason, what was the cause, for the Gracious One dismissing Venerable Yupava, saying, Depart, monk, do not stand in front of me. Then Venerable Nanda said this to the Gracious One, This Venerable Yupava has been the Gracious One's attendant for a long time, living near to him, within proximity. Then at the last moment the Gracious One dismisses Venerable Yupava, saying, Depart, monk, do not stand in front of me. What is the reason, Reverend Sir? What is the cause, for the Gracious One dismissing Venerable Yupava, saying, Depart, monk, do not stand in front of me. Almost all of the divinities, Nanda, from the ten world elements have assembled to see the realized one. Everywhere around Kusanair and the Malas Sal Wood at Upavatana for as far as twelve leagues there is no place, even so much as a tip of a pricking hair, 
unpervaded by powerful divinities. And the divinities, Nanda, are complaining, saying, We have come from afar to see the realized one. Only occasionally, infrequently, do realized ones, worthy ones, perfect Sambuddhas arise in the world, and today during the last watch of the night will be the realized one's final emancipation. And this powerful monk is stood in front concealing the realized one, and we are not able to see the realized one at the last moment. But what beings and divinities is the gracious one thinking of? There are, Nanda, divinities in the sky, perceiving the earth, who, having disheveled hair, are weeping, throwing up their arms, falling down as though cut down. Rolling backwards and forwards as though with their feet cut off, they are crying, too quickly the gracious one will attain final emancipation. Too quickly the fortunate one will attain final emancipation, too quickly the visionary in the world will disappear. There are, Nanda, divinities on the earth, perceiving the earth, who, having disheveled hair, are weeping, throwing up their arms. Falling down as though cut down, rolling backwards and forwards as though with their feet cut off, they are crying, too quickly the gracious one will attain final emancipation. Too quickly the fortunate one will attain final emancipation, too quickly the visionary in the world will disappear. But those divinities who have cut off passion, mindfully, with full awareness, they endure, thinking, impermanent are all processes, how can it be otherwise? 35. The Four Places That Produce Enthusiasm Formerly, Reverend Sir, the monks, having dwelt for the rains retreat used to come to see the realized one, and we would receive those meditating monks for assembling and seeing the realized one. But after the gracious one has passed away, Reverend Sir, we will not receive those meditating monks for assembling and seeing the realized one. There are these four places that can be seen, that produce enthusiasm, Nanda, for a faithful man of good family. Which four? 1. Thinking, here the realized one was born, Nanda, that is a place to be seen that produces enthusiasm for a faithful man of good family. 2. Thinking, here the realized one awoke to the unsurpassed and perfect awakening, Nanda, that is a place to be seen that produces enthusiasm for a faithful man of good family. 3. Thinking, here the realized one set rolling the wheel of the teaching, Nanda, that is a place to be seen that produces enthusiasm for a faithful man of good family. 4. Thinking, here the realized one was completely emancipated in the emancipation element which has no basis for attachment remaining, Nanda. That is a place to be seen that produces enthusiasm for a faithful man of good family. These are the four places, Nanda that are to be seen that produce enthusiasm for a faithful man of good family. Faithful monks, nuns, laymen and laywomen will come, thinking, here the realized one was born, here the realized one awoke to the unsurpassed and perfect awakening. Here the realized one set rolling the wheel of the teaching, here the realized one was finally emancipated in the emancipation element which has no basis for attachment remaining. And whoever, Nanda, will die while on pilgrimage to the shrines with a confident mind they will all, at the breakup of the body, after death, re-arise in a fortunate destiny, in a heavenly world. How, Reverend Sir, are we to act in regard to women? As though they were not seen, Nanda Dot. But when seeing them, Reverend Sir, how are we to act? Without conversing, Nanda Dot. But when conversing, Reverend Sir, how are we to act? You should attend to mindfulness, Nanda Dot. How should we act, Reverend Sir, in regard to the realized one's body? Do not worry, Nanda, about how you are to worshipfully dispose of the realized one's body. Come, Nanda, live striving for the highest good, being devoted to the highest good, being heedful of the highest good, ardent, and resolute. There are, Nanda, wise nobles, wise Brahmins, wise householders who have faith in the realized one. They will worshipfully dispose of the realized one's body. How should we act, Reverend Sir, in regard to the realized one's body? As you act in regard to the universal monarch's body, so you should act in regard to the realized one's body. But how do they act, Reverend Sir, 
in regard to the universal monarch's body. They wrap the universal monarch's body, Nanda, with clean cloth, and after wrapping with clean cloth, they wrap with carded cotton, and after wrapping with carded cotton, they wrap with clean cloth. By this means after wrapping the universal monarch's body with 500 pairs of cloth and cotton, enclosing it in an oil tub made of iron, and enclosing it in another iron tub, and putting it on a scented funeral pyre, they burn the universal monarch's body, and they build a shrine for the universal monarch at the crossroads. So they act in regard to a universal monarch's body, and as they act in regard to a universal monarch's body so should they act in regard to a realized one's body. And a shrine should be made for the realized one at the crossroads. Whoever there prepares flowers, incense, or powder, or worships or establishes confidence in his mind, that will be for their benefit and happiness for a long time. These four persons, Nanda, are worthy of a shrine. Which four? 1. A realized one, a worthy one, a perfect Sambuddha is worthy of a shrine. 2. An individual Sambuddha is worthy of a shrine. 3. A realized one's disciple is worthy of a shrine. 4. A universal monarch is worthy of a shrine. And for what reason or cause is a realized one, a worthy one, a perfect Sambuddha worthy of a shrine? Thinking. This is the shrine of a realized one, a worthy one, a perfect Sambuddha, Nanda, many people purify their mind, and after purifying their mind, at the breakup of the body, after death. They arise in a fortunate destiny, in a heavenly world. This is the reason or cause, Nanda, why a realized one, a worthy one, a perfect Sambuddha is worthy of a shrine. And for what reason or cause is an individual Sambuddha worthy of a shrine? Thinking, this is the shrine of a gracious one, an individual Sambuddha, Nanda, many people purify their mind. And after purifying their mind, at the breakup of the body, after death, they arise in a fortunate destiny, in a heavenly world. This is the reason or cause, Nanda, why an individual Sambuddha is worthy of a shrine. And for what reason or cause is a realized one's disciple worthy of a shrine? Thinking, this is the shrine of a disciple of a gracious one, a worthy one, a perfect Sambuddha, Nanda, many people purify their mind, and after purifying their mind, at the breakup of the body, after death, they arise in a fortunate destiny, in a heavenly world. This is the reason or cause, Nanda, why a realized one's disciple is worthy of a shrine. And for what reason or cause is a universal monarch worthy of a shrine? Thinking, this is the shrine of righteous monarch, a righteous king. Nanda, many people purify their mind, and after purifying their mind, at the breakup of the body, after death, they arise in a fortunate destiny, in a heavenly world. This is the reason or cause, Nanda, why a universal monarch is worthy of a shrine. These, Nanda, are the four persons worthy of a shrine. 36. Nanda s Marvelous Qualities Then Venerable Nanda, after entering the living place, and leaning against the door lintel, stood there crying. The teacher will attain final emancipation while I am still a trainee with much to do, he who has compassion for me. Then the gracious one addressed the monks, saying, Where, monks, is Nanda? This venerable Nanda, Reverend Sir, after entering the living place, and leaning against the door lintel, stands there crying. The teacher will attain final emancipation while I am still a trainee with much to do, he who has compassion for me. Then the gracious one addressed a certain monk, saying, Go, monk, and in my name address Nanda, saying, The teacher, friend Nanda, is calling you. Very well, reverend sir, and after replying to the gracious one, he approached venerable Nanda, and after approaching he said this to venerable Nanda, The teacher, friend Nanda, is calling you. Very well, friend, said venerable Nanda and after replying to that monk, he approached the Gracious One, and after approaching and worshipping the Gracious One, he sat down on one side. While sitting on one side the Gracious One said this to Venerable Nanda. Enough, Nanda, don't grieve, don't lament, were you not warned by me when I declared, 
there is alteration in, separation from, and change of ability in all that is dear and appealing. How can it be otherwise, Nanda, for that which is obtained, born, become, conditioned, subject to dissolution? It is not possible to say this, the realized one's body should not dissolve. For a long time, Nanda, you dwelt near to the realized one with beneficial, pleasant, trustworthy and limitlessly friendly bodily actions. With beneficial, pleasant, trustworthy and limitlessly friendly speech actions, with beneficial, pleasant, trustworthy and limitlessly friendly mental actions, you have done meritorious deeds. Nanda, you should devote yourself to quickly striving to be one who is pollutant free. Then the gracious one addressed the monks, saying, Whoever were worthy ones, perfect Sambuddhas in the past, monks, for those gracious ones also there were such superior attendants. Just as Nanda is for me, whoever will be worthy ones, perfect Sambuddhas in the future, monks, for those gracious ones also there will be such superior attendants, just as Nanda is for me. Nanda is wise, monks, Nanda is intelligent, monks, he knows, this is the time for monks to approach and see the realized one, this is the time for monks. This is the time for nuns, this is the time for laymen, this is the time for laywomen, this is the time for kings, for kings ministers, for outside teachers, for the disciples of outside teachers. There are four wonderful and marvelous things, monks, about Nanda. Which four? 1. If, monks, a group of monks approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome, their minds are uplifted with the speech. But that group of monks are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. 2. If, monks, a group of nuns approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome, their minds are uplifted with the speech. But that group of nuns are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. 3. If, monks, a group of laymen approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome, their minds are uplifted with the speech. But that group of laymen are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. 4. If, monks, a group of laywomen approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome, their minds are uplifted with the speech. But that group of laywomen are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. These are the four wonderful and marvelous things about Nanda. There are four wonderful and marvelous things, monks, about the universal monarch. Which four? 1. If, monks, a group of nobles approach to see the universal monarch their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if the universal monarch speaks. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of nobles are dissatisfied if then the universal monarch remains silent. 2. If, monks, a group of Brahmins approach to see the universal monarch their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if the universal monarch speaks. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of Brahmins are dissatisfied if then the universal monarch remains silent. 3. If, Monks, a group of householders approach to see the universal monarch their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if the universal monarch speaks. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of householders are dissatisfied if then the universal monarch remains silent. 4. If, monks, a group of ascetics approach to see the universal monarch their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if the universal monarch speaks. Their minds are uplifted with the speech but that group of ascetics are dissatisfied if then the universal monarch remains silent. In the same way there are four wonderful and marvelous things, monks, about Nanda. 1. If, monks, a group of monks approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of monks are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. 2. If, monks, a group of nuns approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of nuns are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. 3. If, monks, 
a group of laymen approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of laymen are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. 4. If, monks, a group of laywomen approach to see Nanda their minds are uplifted through seeing him, and if Nanda speaks words of welcome. Their minds are uplifted with the speech, but that group of laywomen are dissatisfied if at that time Nanda remains silent. There are the four wonderful and marvelous things, monks, about Nanda. 37. Cusanera's History After this was said, Venerable Nanda addressed the Gracious One, saying, Reverend Sir, may the Gracious One not attain final emancipation in this small town, this barren town, this branch town. There are, Reverend Sir, other great towns, such as, Camp, Rajagaha, Svath, Skida, Kozam, Braz let the Gracious One attain final emancipation there. There are many wealthy nobles there, wealthy Brahmins, wealthy householders, who are devoted to the Realized One, and will worship fully dispose of the Realized One's body. Do not say that, Nanda, do not say that, Nanda, this small town, this barren town, this branch town. Formerly, Nanda, there was a king by the name of Masudasana, a righteous monarch, a righteous king, who was victorious over the four quarters one who had established a stable country, endowed with the seven jewels. This Kuzanair, was then named Kusvat, and was King Masudasana's capital city. Stretching for twelve leagues from east to west, and seven leagues from north to south, the capital city Kusvat was prosperous, Nanda, successful, populous, full of people, with much food, just as, Nanda. The capital city of the divinities named Akamand is prosperous, successful, populous, full of people, with much food, so the capital city Kusvat was prosperous, Nanda, successful, populous, full of people, with much food. The capital city Kusvat was never separated from the ten sounds, by day or by night, that is to say. The sound of elephants, the sound of horses, the sound of chariots, the sound of drums, the sound of tabours, the sound of lutes, the sound of songs, the sound of cymbals, the sound of handbells, and with eat, drink, chew, as the tenth sound. 38. The Malas worship the Gracious One. Go, Nanda, and after entering into Kuzanair, announce to the Malas, today, Visahas, in the last watch of the night will be the realized one's attainment of final emancipation. Come along, Visahas, come along, Visahas, do not regret it afterwards thinking, in the area of our village, was the realized one's attainment of final emancipation, and we did not. In the last watch of the night, get to see the realized one. Very well, Reverend Sir, said Venerable Nanda, and after replying to the Gracious One, dressing, and taking his robes and bowl, he entered Kuzanair with a companion. Now at that time the Malas from Kuzanair were assembled in the council hall having some business or other. Then Venerable Nanda went to where the Malas from Kuzanair were assembled in the council hall, and after approaching he said this to the Malas. Today, Visahas, in the last watch of the night, will be the realized one's attainment of final emancipation, come along, Visahas, come along. Visahas. Do not regret it afterwards thinking, in the area of our village, was the realized one's attainment of final emancipation, and we did not, in the last watch of the night, get to see the realized one. After hearing this from Venerable Nanda, the Malas, the sons of the Malas, the daughters-in-law of the Malas, and the wives of the Malas became miserable, depressed, with their minds given over to suffering. Some, having disheveled hair, were weeping, throwing up their arms, falling down as though cut down, rolling backwards and forwards as though with their feet cut off, they were crying. Too quickly the gracious one will attain final emancipation, too quickly the fortunate one will attain final emancipation, too quickly the visionary in the world will disappear. Then the Malas, the sons of the Malas, the daughters-in-law of the Malas, and the wives of the Malas, miserable, depressed, with their minds given over to suffering. 
approached the Mala Sal wood at Yupavatana, and approached Venerable Nanda. Then this occurred to Venerable Nanda, if I make the Malas of Kusanair worship the Gracious One one by one before the Gracious One has been worshipped by the Malas of Kusanair the night will end. Now what if I, having segregated the Malas family by family, made them worship the Gracious One, saying, A Mala named so and so, together with his children, wife, dependents, and counselors worships the Gracious One's feet with his head. Then Venerable Nanda having segregated the Malas family by family, made them worship the Gracious One, saying, A Mala named so and so, together with his children, wife, dependents, and counselors worships the Gracious One's feet with his head. Then Venerable Nanda, in this way, during the first watch of the night, made the Malas of Kusanair worship the Gracious One. 39. Subhada, the last direct disciple. Now at that time a wanderer named Subhada had arrived at Kusanair. The wanderer Subhada heard, Today, it seems, in the last watch of the night, will be the ascetic Gotama's attainment of final emancipation. Then this occurred to the wanderer Subhada, I have heard this from old, elderly wanderers, who are teachers and teachers' teachers, when they said. Only occasionally, rarely, do realized ones, worthy ones, perfect Sambuddhas arise in the world. Today, in the last watch of the night, will be the ascetic Gotama's attainment of final emancipation. There is a doubt that has arisen for me, and I have confidence in the ascetic Gotama thus, the ascetic Gotama is able to teach the teaching in such a way that I will be able to abandon that doubt. Then the wanderer Subhada approached the Malas Sal wood at Yupavatana, and approached Venerable Nanda, and after approaching he said to Venerable Nanda, I have heard this from old, elderly wanderers, dear Nanda, who are teachers and teachers' teachers, when they said. Only occasionally, rarely, do realized ones, worthy ones, perfect Sambuddhas arise in the world. Today, in the last watch of the night, will be the ascetic Gotama's attainment of final emancipation. There is a doubt that has arisen for me, and I have confidence in the ascetic Gotama thus. The ascetic Gotama is able to teach the teaching in such a way that I will be able to abandon that doubt. It would be well, dear Nanda, if I was allowed to see the ascetic Gotama. After this was said, Venerable Nanda said this to the wanderer Subhada, Enough, friend Subhada, do not trouble the realized one, the gracious one is exhausted. For a second time the wanderer Subhada said this to Venerable Nanda. I have heard this from old, elderly wanderers, dear Nanda, who are teachers and teachers' teachers, when they said. Only occasionally, rarely, do realized ones, worthy ones, perfect Sambuddhas arise in the world. Today, in the last watch of the night, will be the realized one's attainment of final emancipation. There is a doubt that has arisen for me, and I have confidence in the ascetic Gotama thus. The ascetic Gotama is able to teach the teaching in such a way that I will be able to abandon that doubt. It would be well, dear Nanda if I was allowed to see the ascetic Gotama. For a second time Venerable Nanda said this to the wanderer Subhada. Enough, friend Subhada, do not trouble the realized one, the gracious one is exhausted. For a third time the wanderer Subhada said this to Venerable Nanda. I have heard this from old, elderly wanderers, dear Nanda, who are teachers and teachers' teachers, when they said, only occasionally, rarely, do realized ones, worthy ones. Perfect Sambuddhas arise in the world. Today, in the last watch of the night, will be the ascetic Gotama's attainment of final emancipation. There is a doubt that has arisen for me, and I have confidence in the ascetic Gotama thus. The ascetic Gotama is able to teach the teaching in such a way that I will be able to abandon that doubt. It would be well, dear Nanda, if I was allowed to see the ascetic Gotama. For a third time Venerable Nanda said this to the wanderer Subhada, Enough, friend Subhada, do not trouble the realized one, the gracious one is exhausted. The gracious one heard Venerable Nanda having this conversation with the wanderer Subhada. Then the gracious one said this to Venerable Nanda, Enough, Nanda, do not obstruct Subhada allow Subhada to see the realized one. Whatever Subhada will ask of me all of it he will ask of me seeking for deep knowledge and not to trouble me. 
Whatever question is put I will answer, and he will quickly understand it. Then Venerable Nanda said this to the wanderer Subhada, Go, friend Subhada, the Gracious One has given you permission. Then the wanderer Subhada approached the Gracious One, and after approaching, he exchanged greetings with the Gracious One, and after exchanging courteous talk and greetings, he sat down on one side. While sitting on one side the wanderer Subhada said this to the Gracious One. Those ascetics and Brahmins, dear Gotama, who have a community, a group, who teach a group, well-known, famous, religious founders, agreed upon as good for the people, such as Prakasapa, Makhali Gosla, Ajitakesa Kambala, Pakudha Kasayana, Sanjaya Balahaputa, Nigahanaputa, have they all understood, according to their own avowal? Have they all not understood? Or, have some understood? Or, have some not understood? Enough, Subhada, stop this, have they all understood, according to their own avowal? Have they all not understood? Or, have some understood? Or, have some not understood? I will teach the teaching to you, Subhada, listen to it, apply your mind well, and I will speak. Very well, Reverend Sir, the wanderer Subhada replied to the Gracious One, and the Gracious One said this. Wherever, Subhada, the Noble Eightfold Path is not found in a teaching and discipline there a true ascetic is not found, there a second true ascetic is not found, there a third true ascetic is not found. There a fourth true ascetic is not found. But wherever, Subhada, the Noble Eightfold Path is found in a teaching and discipline there a true ascetic is found. There a second true ascetic is found, there a third true ascetic is found, there a fourth true ascetic is found. In this teaching and discipline, Subhada, the Noble Eightfold Path is found, here a true ascetic is found, here a second true ascetic is found, here a third true ascetic is found, here a fourth true ascetic is found. Void are the outside doctrines of these other ascetics, Subhada, but if monks should live well, the world will not be void of worthy ones. At twenty-nine years, Subhada, I went forth a seeker of what is good. More than fifty years ago. Wherefore I am truly gone forth, Subhada. Existing in the realm of the right teaching. Outside of this there is no true ascetic. A second true ascetic is not found, a third true ascetic is not found, a fourth true ascetic is not found. Void are the outside doctrines of these other ascetics, Subhada, but if monks should live well, the world will not be void of worthy ones. After this was said, the wanderer Subhada said this to the Gracious One. Excellent, Reverend Sir. Excellent, Reverend Sir. Just as, Reverend Sir, one might set upright what has been overturned, or open up what has been closed, or show a path to one who is lost. Or bear an oil lamp in the darkness, so that one who has eyes can see forms, just so has the teaching been made clear by the Gracious One in more than one way. I go to the Gracious One for refuge, Reverend Sir, and to the teaching, and to the community of monks. May I receive the going forth, Reverend Sir, in the presence of the Gracious One, may I receive the full ordination. Those who were formerly of another sect who in this teaching and discipline desire the going forth, who desire full ordination, live on probation for four months. And at the end of four months, the minds of the monks being satisfied, they give the going forth and the full ordination into the monkhood. But I understand there is a distinction between persons in this case. If, Reverend Sir, those who were formerly of another sect who in this teaching and discipline, desire the going forth, who desire full ordination, live on probation for four months, and at the end of four months, the minds of the monks being satisfied, they give the going forth and the full ordination into the monkhood. Then I will live on probation for four years, and at the end of four years, the minds of the monks being satisfied, they can give the going forth and the full ordination into the monkhood. Then the Gracious One said this to Venerable Nanda, Then, Nanda, give the going forth to Subhada. Very well, Reverend Sir, Venerable Nanda replied to the Gracious One. Then the Wanderer Subhada said this to Venerable Nanda, There are certainly gains for you, friend Nanda. It is certainly a good gain for you, 
friend Nanda, that here, face to face with the teacher, you have been consecrated with an attendance consecration. The wanderer Subhada received the going forth in the presence of the Gracious One, received full ordination. Then not long after ordination, Venerable Subhada, while dwelling solitary, secluded, heedful, ardent, and resolute. After no long time attained that good for which young gentlemen rightly go forth from the house to the houseless life, that unsurpassed conclusion to the spiritual life, and dwelt having known, experienced, and attained it himself in this very life. Destroyed is rebirth, accomplished is the spiritual life, done is what ought to be done, there is no more of this mundane state this he knew. And Venerable Subhada became another of the worthy ones. He was the last direct disciple of the Gracious One. The fifth chapter for recital is finished.